With so many questions to be answered in college football this season, one thing remains true. Who will be transferring where? And how much of an impact will they have? We'll sit down with Debonair D. Jackson to discuss this year's top transfers. All this and more coming up next on Heisman Talk. There are many questions to be answered this year in college football, but one of the few questions that hasn't been answered is about the transfer portal. And where are these players going? Well, to give more insight on this, joining me now, Heisman Talk Inside Analyst, Devonair D. Jackson. D, thanks for joining the show again. Thanks for having me again, Nate. I'm excited to be on again. Yeah, and you know, this is our fourth week uh, coming on together, and I think it's safe to say that I have found a new co-host. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. I, li- I like that. I like that. So, D, over the past few weeks, we've discussed, uh, you know, some of the top MVPs of each conference, along with impactful freshmen coming into the 2020 season. There's a lot of big names out there that are transferring this year. Who's your first most impactful transfer for this year? Uh, So, like you said, there's a lot of guys, you know, that are transferring that, you know, could have easily been picked. Um, I went with uh, Miami quarterback transferring from Houston. Uh, Derek King, um, you know, this guy is, is, is a 5'11", 194-pound uh, firecracker, man. He's, he's explosive, and he's, he's basically a receiver playing quarterback. You know, he, his, his ability to uh, use his legs and just, just um, you know, spin on somebody or, or use his agility to shake somebody is, is phenomenal. You know, um, you know, last year, you know, he, he redshirted after playing four games at, at Houston. And he, um, in 2018, he passed for, for you know, 2,982 yards with, you know, 36 touchdowns and only uh, six interceptions. So if uh, he, can, he can give that production to Miami, you know, I think he's going to be a phenomenal uh, addition uh, to their team, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't agree more. You know, Derek King, we saw what he was able to do two years ago at Houston, takes off last year. A lot of people thought he was going to return to Houston, and he kind of uh, surprised a lot of people when he entered the, entered the transfer portal. So, yeah, great pick. I think he's a dual-threat quarterback that could really make some noise in the ACC this year. Agreed. Agreed. So I went with uh, who would have been his teammate, who is no longer with the Miami Hurricanes. That is Lorenzo Lingard, running back. Um, as you know, this guy was a highly recruited running back in the class of 2017. I believe he was the number two running back in the nation behind none other than Zamir White for the University of Georgia. Um, played six games in his freshman year before suffering a terrible MCL uh, injury and spent all of last year trying to regain that strength and recover. Um, you know, he heads to Florida, and this is a team that's really been depleted for the past few years in the running game. They've relied heavily on Kyle Trask to bring in a few wide receivers, keep a few wide receivers. So passing game looks pretty strong. So you bring in a guy like Lorenzo Lingard, and you're looking at a pretty dangerous offense. Um, you know, I, I I think, obviously, you know, knee injuries uh, linger a lot. Um, especially with running backs. But if, if Lorenzo can stay healthy, look for him to have a huge coming out party uh, in the SEC. Agreed, man. Um, you know, that, that uh, 2018 running back class was pretty good, and he was, you know, a top-tier running back coming out of high school. You know, it was kind of shocking he really didn't pan out at, at Miami. You know, he had a few injuries. But, you know, I, I would definitely be looking out for him uh, with the Florida Gators uh, this year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, you know, we've, we've discussed a few other players. D, who's, who's your second transfer? Uh, my second guy is, uh, well, he's transferred from Stanford, and he'll be playing his football at Mississippi State this year. Uh, it's K.J. Costello, the quarterback that will be at Mississippi State. Uh, this guy is, you know, six foot five, uh, 222 pounds. So he has that, you know, prototypical uh, quarterback frame. You know, his ability to stand tall in the, in the pocket and, and, you know, pinpoint passes is, is, is great. And, uh, you know, him playing with, you know, a coach like Matt, Mike Leach who likes to put up points and, you know, spread the offense or, or spread the defense out, you know, with his offense, um, I think he'll be able to put up big numbers. Um, 
I don't know if it'll be like Joe Burrow last year, but I think that, you know, he has that, you know, type of ability to put up numbers like that. And uh, I think it'll be, you know, really, really interesting. Hopefully, you know, he can get back to his 2018 uh, form, you know, because he was pretty good in 2018. You know, he threw for 3,540 uh, yards, um, 413 attempts, and uh, had, you know, 20, 29 touchdowns and only 11 interceptions. So uh, hopefully he can get back to that form if he can. Um, I think, um, I think that Mississippi State will definitely surprise some people uh, in the SEC. Yeah, yeah. Again, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of uncertainties in the SEC West this year with with a lot of new head coaches, obviously. Um, and I with an, went with another uh, SEC West school, and that's the Arkansas Razorbacks. Um, I went with quarterback Felipe Franks. Now, you know. Obviously, a lot of people didn't think that he um, was that great at Florida, although, you know, this is a former five-star quarterback that was heavily recruited by some of the best schools in the nation, including LSU, Clemson, and Alabama, to name a few, and obviously he ended up going to Florida, but, you know, he comes off of of a gruesome uh, ankle fracture um, this past year, but, you know, he goes to an offense under Coach Bryles. Uh, new offensive coordinator that Sam Pittman brought in, um, who spent the last several years coaching under some of the best offensive gurus in the game. He spent the last three years at Baylor. You saw what he did there, and he spent uh, the 2017 season under Lane Kiffin at FAU. So, you know, I think this is the perfect fit for Felipe Frank to, to have a fresh start for one um, after spending three years at Florida. Um, but Watch out! Watch out in the SEC West. There's a few quarterbacks, like you mentioned, that could really uh, make a push this year for some uh, very underrated teams. Agree, man. Uh, like you said, a lot of people didn't like uh, Felipe Franks, um, you know, at Florida, but I think with him going to Arkansas and you know playing under Sam Pittman, you know, I think Sam Pittman gets an experienced quarterback who played in some big games, and you know. I, Anything can happen. You never know. You know, I think that Arkansas has talent here and there, and uh, we'll, we'll see how they fare in the, in the SEC West. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more. And, you know, we're, we're probably going to talk about um, some of these coaches in our next episode. Um, so, Dee, thanks for joining us today. When we come back next week, we're going to discuss some of the top newcoming head coaches in college football. So stay tuned for that. Until then. Make sure that you're subscribed. Give this video a big thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And we'll see you next week. Until then, this is Nate Dog signing off.